So between a good trailer and a completely fuck awful poster, I was not expecting Kingsman to be as good as it was. Anywhere near as good as it was. <laughs> Ding. For those who don't know what I mean, I don't mean this poster, which is fine and quite suave and elegant and we have in the cinemas here and it's totally good. Or this one, which is apparently the American one, which is kind of generic and makes Colin Firth look like he's the main character. But this one, which references an old James Vaughn film for your eyes only, which is just kind of awful <laughs> for a variety of reasons. N namely the um, awful, awful legs, which are clearly added in afterwards when in the film. They don't look like they're added in. They're, it's actually a really high budget film. You can see where the product's being placed, but they're being placed so well and blatantly that it's hilarious and you can just roll with it. What you want to get from the trailers is that Kingsman is a Matthew Vaughan film, aka Kick-Ass, X-Men First Class, those really, really good films that are based on comics that haven't come from the Marvel MCU. Based on the Secret Service comics by Mark Miller, Kick-Ass, uh, okay, kind of a checkered career, honestly, but some really good ones in there, and Dave Gibbons, the artist of Watchmen, Matthew Vaughan, Kick-Ass, Mark Miller, Kick-Ass. Let's go with Kick-Ass 1 as a review reference point. Yeah, really, really good. Go with that. It's very similar in some ways. The swearing is not toned down. The gore is not toned down. You, there is, like, violence and stuff in this that it is, it's not, like, going to be brought down to try and change the age rating. Kingsman's a film that revels in itself and is unashamed. And because it's so unashamed of itself, it gets to do whatever it wants to. It gets to have its cake and eat it. There's... A lot in this film about having issue something both ways, about not compromise, but just do both and be awesome at it. Like, we want a disabled character, but we also want crazy action. Let's have a double amputee with bladed legs. Let's have a sequence with a wall covered with British newspapers, but we can't advertise the British newspapers because pretty much all of them are shit or have a hidden agenda. Let's point out that they're shit and have a hidden agenda. And a variety of other things that would be spoilers and fantastic reveals that I'm not even going to go into here. The trailers barely scratch the surface of how awesome this film is. It is actually, yes, and Colin Firth is amazing in it, yes, but there's so much going on. I would like to point out that Colin Firth is not known for his action skills, which is really awesome. Yeah, yeah, it works fantastic though. The, the directing in this for the action sequences is brilliant. It's like, we've seen Speed Up Slow Down used to great effect in the Sherlock Holmes films. But it doesn't do the Speed Up Slow Down, it does everything fast paced. Mm -hmm. The thing it does is it very often has the camera physically following the action. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it does lots doesn't... of POV stuff. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, come over here, come over here. Hang on. No, no. Let's, let's angle this. Oh. Must not happen to those Skyrim. Ah! I've had the map in for every episode that I've lived here. I watched it with Mike. Hello. Have you ever appeared on camera before? Not on this. Okay. It has lots of really cool POV stuff. There's a, there's a gimmick in this film that they, they're spies, so they all wear these glasses that have like lenses that do stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but they also have cameras built in, which gives the, the film an in-film in excuse to have um, some really cool sort of first-person mm -hmm. uh, action stuff where you get... It's almost like they've, they've probably had like a GoPro or something. I was going to say someone. GoPro. The um, GoPro's allowed so much innovation and just stick it to something and yeah. do cool stuff um, with it. And, but they really play with that. So there are a lot of sequences where someone will punch... Um, and the camera will follow the punch. It won't just, it won't, as in, it's not just like there's a camera attached to their fist. It's like the camera goes beyond their fist and you see the person, you know, the person fly yeah. off into the distance. See the tooth spin away. Yes. It's, it's it, so there, I mean, well there, there is some slow motion in the film, but it's not, but it's not like um, Zack Snyder slow motion. It's not, it's not, you know, it doesn't slow it yeah. speed down. It just, they will have a moment where they, where they deliberately slow it down so that uh, you can appreciate what's going on in any particular scene. Yeah, the original purpose of slow motion, to change the tension, allow you to appreciate some really awesome shot. And we've, we've gotten away from that so much in certain films, like the latter Sherlock Holmes. It's like, oh, all of Michael Bay stuff, which just looked at the Sherlock Holmes and goes, hey, speed up, slow down is cool. One of the things with this, it is really frenetic, it's very fast, um, but it does it, they're very careful in the camera shots they use, so you don't get a Michael Bay bit where, um, there is so much going on you have no idea there's mm -hmm. always there's always like a focus of the scene so you can see i mean there will be bits where someone does like a big car wheel or something and it might slow down and show them like dodging a bullet or a blade sort of mm -hmm. fast their pace um but any of the fast paced scenes you always have a vague idea of what's going on you can't you there's yes. no point at which i was like ah this is too much i got you <laughs> this is this is not transformers or, yeah oh actually bring in another awful director that bit in um Shyamalan's not avatar 
where they have this scene where he's fighting a lot of people and the camera's moving around as they move around and it's awful because nothing happens. This one has a does it much better with the idea of focusing on the character who's doing all the fighting yeah. and having people come in and out of the shot as he defeats them. Also, another important one, Matthew Vaughn is showing his... You, you can oh, oh, there you, It's very easy to see from all of his films that Matthew Vaughn likes music because he puts <laughs> it in a lot. But his use of music in this film is glorious. I won't tell you what happens. I won't tell you what what it is. But there is time. Uh, you know, there is things timed to specific songs that you will know. There is no way you do not know these songs mm-hmm. um, unless you are completely have been completely avoiding music for the last twenty or thirty years. Oh yeah, it's one of those ones that seep into or the popular longer. consciousness. Like I don't know the names of all the songs that happened, but I do know the songs. Like I've heard them in things. All I will say is Freebird. And when you get to that moment in the film, you will know what I am talking about. The thing is, there's so many moments that get that good. Where it's like, oh man, the bit that leads up from this, oh. And you don't want to tell people because, god damn, that reveal is insane. Yeah, the, it's there's, so there well is, done. There is so much, this film gives so much more than I was expecting it to give. Mm-hmm. I was expecting a pretty good film. Yeah, I, I mean, was expecting kind Layer of funny. Cake, Layer Cake is a good film. I'm not a big fan of gangster movies, so it wasn't really my thing. You can tell he was... An assistant director for Guy Ritchie uh, from Layer Cake because it just it just leads on. It was Layer Cake, Kick Ass, uh, X Men First Class, and then Kingsman. I mean, the the, the, the caliber of his work is just uh, I think just personally for me really good, and it may be a touchy thing on a on a on an angle. This movie sadly does not pass the Bechdel test. No, it, it's um, very true. It doesn't go into that route. It's not the point. No, of but it, in though. the context of this film, this film is more about class, mm-hmm. and um, it's it's sending up uh, Bond. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the one of the key aspects of the film is very focused on the gentleman spy, um, and well, it's sending up rudeness both in a fictional universe and in the real universe. Well, no, 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 it's not just rudeness. It's, it, it's it's being stuck in a system based on privilege mm. and class. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and specifically, this is whilst the themes are very universal it applies very much to um the fact that matthew vaughan is english and it applies very much to the english class system which, which i mean obviously i'm not american so okay. i don't i don't know the the, the the class or wealth the differences in america but i'm sure there are a certain things of there are rich families who have you know this thing and they you have universities like oh yeah the, Princeton and so on. the wealth gap exists it's just not going to take the same shape this film had to be made by a british person like the cornetto trilogy it had to be mm. made in britain for all these Britishisms and this understanding well, of the, yeah, underlying like, understanding no, of if an American to made work. this movie, it wouldn't be the same movie. Even mm-hmm. if they, you know, even if they weren't just going for pure, you know, we are doing Bond action film. Mm-hmm. You know, this film um, works on is very much about British class and mm-hmm. British classism. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, it even goes down to act a- accents. Mm-hmm. Like I, I'm sure people have seen the My Fair Lady trailer. Uh, trailer. Um, which, which I'm totally linking one of to. Brilliant jokes. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, that is a very big, strong part of the film. You know, it's there are regional. You know, anyone who's English who knows reading and watching this knows exactly what I'm talking about. Anyone who's not English who's watching this will know, may or may not know. We have a very large breadth of uh, regional accents in a very small space. Mm-hmm. So you, you will get someone you know 100 miles away mm-hmm. who speaks with a very different accent to someone. Oh god, yeah. I'm, I'm, from the, I'm from the north. We have Middlesbrough, very close to Newcastle, very close to York. Very close. All these places are reachable from each other very easily, mm-hmm. but nobody sounds like they're from the same place whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I will link here to Doc Brown talking about his uh, <laughs> idioms. That's yeah, the thing. The has, Cockney yeah, accent is the one everyone knows, but it's not no, as simple as the, Cockney. The thing is, people might not recognise a Cockney accent because a lot of people have recognition of Cockney accent from things like Firefly and Oliver and, and Oliver and so on and so forth, and they're like. Uh, exaggerated Cockney accents. It's like someone doing an exaggerated Texan accent or an exaggerated Brummie, uh, Brummie accent for people who know what that is. The privileged elite find it hard to see outside of their box is one of the things it anyway, uh, we, discusses. We, we he- from he- hence the bit when one of the characters says, so, where, so what are you from? Oxford or Cambridge? Those are the choices. Those are the choices. It's smart. It's uh, like I expected a, a kind of funny, decent action. And I went in getting really funny when the moment was right. Mm-hmm. Very clever good social, when it wanted good to. Social commentary. Such good social commentary. Christ. Also good film. Um, also good comments on films because I mean the the, the, reference, yeah. the references to Bond are there. Mm-hmm. Uh, the references to other 
uh, spy genre films. Um, mm-hmm. Everyone is wearing the Michael Caine glasses from Get Carter. Um, they, mm-hmm. they, they just are, including Michael Caine, which is kind of awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, there are references to Jack Bauer. Mm-hmm. There is reference to Jason Bourne. So it's not just the English spy genre that's being referenced. It's just spy genre as a, a, a as a spy films as a genre. Oh yeah, and there's um, a ton of references, both ones that are very clear and discussed, and ones that are subtle, like light motifs in the music, <laughs> zip between different little things. Also, it's really and good. This, this would be a very, a very good one. If you are fond, you don't have to love, but if you are fond of the uh, the Roger Moore Bond films, you know, with the uh, overblown villain and uh, the this silly thing this is so one of those films that it, it there is whilst it has all of the other stuff in it it is one of those films uh, it just has all of the motifs in it mm-hmm. um, it has a crazy car, se- a car chase sequence at the beginning of the film which is brilliant oh my god yeah um, and it br- and every and like with everything else it brings something new to the table mm. it's a simple car chase sequence down cu- down city roads in London mm. And they still managed to bring something completely new yeah. that I've not seen. This it's is, probably been another film that's done it, but I've not seen that at all before. As I said, if I was going to have one complaint for the film, a one complaint, really, that is the treatment of the female characters for the most part. And Both that, of that, them. That, 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 that's, that's, no, that's, that's there, are, there are three, that's really it. three female characters. Well, she is named, I guess. His mum. Oh yeah, his mum. It's progressive. But not necessarily progressive in yeah. every way. I mean, it's, it's it's not the element it's trying to progress. That's that's the thing. I feel that a baseline of racial and gender diversity is good for a film that isn't about those things. Yeah, as you say, it's not racially it's not particularly racially progressive either. I will, I will say that because there it's, are. It's true, but again, it ties into the point. These old boys clubs. Yeah, they're, and the, the, that is kind they're of all the, the same person basically. Yeah, it is kind of one of the weird things of, of yeah, it is it is a film about a gentleman's club, mm-hmm. and it is you know they have ladies' day maybe. Um, they actually got to ask it, so she's dressed up for ladies' day. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah, sorry. So there's two female characters in this film, and again, doesn't pass the Bechdel test. They don't talk to each other. They don't meet at all. I don't think. I would Priority say, I mean, of thought. Personally, personally, going with his previous works, especially with. Um, with Hit Girl mm-hmm. and Kick Ass. Oh yeah. I, the, the, Matthew Vaughan is uh, clearly a guy who at least respects women. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think he more. I, I think if I. Uh, well, there are, there well, are no uh, damsels hell, in not this. Not just Kick Ass. Cool. X Men First Class. I mean, you've mm-hmm. got Mystique in there. You've got. Um, I can't remember the name now. Uh, Angel. Angel. Emma Frost as well. Yeah, Emma Frost. Oh, oh that Emma Frost. You can't really use Emma Frost as a as a. A, a good female role model because A she's a villain and B she wears nothing no that's true or well, underwear is her costume um, yeah that's fair but even so he, write, I like he does like queen. using very um, strong good mm-hmm. complicated female characters I mean the villain in the film the villain in, in Kingsman mm-hmm. is an interesting character she's not just an empty like a Jaws character yeah, uh, yeah. Where, you know, a, a mindless I will kill for my boss no exactly um She's smart. She does tech stuff. She has a dialogue with her boss, and clearly they trust each other with this project incredibly. And yeah, and you know, the relationship between the two of them, it's hinted as to how they work together and why, but it's never fully. It's a lot of show not tell, which, which I really do also, like. Also, I, 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 every single character in this film, or well, maybe not every single character, but all the characters who really matter in this film have a moment of awesomeness mm-hmm. that is just perfect um you mark strong once again another fantastic actor who's just leaping ahead i mean admittedly he does appear to be one of um uh, matthew Bourne's mainstays because he's been in at least two of his films <laughs> um but he was brilliant his character merlin is is uh, he uh, he's very much the q character from bond yeah yeah he has some wonderful moments and some glorious oh there's <sighs> the moment on the plane <laughs> anyway um <laughs> sorry it's all so good there's nothing there's no bits in this film where i was like get to the next bit there's yeah. no bits where i felt you, you know they were wasting time it's one of those films where they just have so many good ideas and they cram them all in and fluidly go between them all it's just non-stop brilliant and there's some real emotional like gut punches as well <laughs> which seriously seriously impressed the hell out of me it was unexpected yeah, a lot of unexpected. Another one with the female characters is there is another female 
trainee um, you'll have seen her in the trailers almost certainly oh, if yeah. you've watched any of the trailers mm -hmm. um, and her character she gets I'd say she gets sidelined a bit too much I, mm -hmm. I think I, I think we, we both feel that if there's a sequel which hopefully it'll be successful enough that there will be she will play a more major role or at least yeah, not just a more, ma more major role because she had a fairly major role it's just it's true she be part. She didn't need to be. She didn't need to be sidelined the way she was. That, that was. Yeah. That was probably. Like I said, and these the, these criticisms I feel are valid criticisms. I think, but they are more indicative of a problem with cinema than a problem with this film because this film is a genre film and it does it. It does what it does very well. Oh yeah, yeah. with more female characters in the film, but at the same time, you are talking about a film which is sending up James Bond. Mm -hmm. It is a commentary on James Bond, or it's a commentary about other stuff using James Bond as a um, as a vehicle. Yeah, and you know, having those characters, those char who they are, just works mm -hmm. for me. Um, I mean, it's, it does some. It, it does that brilliant thing that I think I last saw in um, not another teen movie, where it insults another film, where it compliments it, and at the same time completely outdoes it all in one swift motion. And it's. It, I can't describe it because it's right near the end. But it's just a very clever, like if you tweaked these things, your film would be better. Yeah. Go learn from us. It's it, it it's fantastic. It's, it's so it's just it's just the littlest things. One thing that is highlighted highlighted to me from this film, from watching this film, because I really enjoyed this film. I thought it was really good. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say, you know, people are talking about giving women more action roles and more, mm -hmm. you know, strong roles. Mm -hmm. um, women need more fun roles. Yes, because a, a, a film like this. Just it just works so so many levels. I'm not just talking on just like being like a ha 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 comedy, but you, you watch this film and it's just fun. It's just really fun. Oh yeah yeah and, yeah. You know, there feels like this gravitas to feel, uh, to women in film at the moment. Like they have to be serious and they have to be giving a message. Mm -hmm. um, and there's something John Cleese said, which I which I wholeheartedly agree with. And there's something very different between serious and sombre. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can tell a serious message. This film proves that, mm -hmm. but without being serious. Oh yeah, exactly. We don't have to tell you. Know, I'm telling you something important right now, so I have to talk in a serious voice. And you have to understand that I'm being gravely serious about this. No, you can tell. You can tell a very fun point. You can tell something very. Uh, I think you can tell it better mm -hmm. with comedy. And I can do well, not just comedy, but with it, just with just fun. I think mm -hmm. it makes it. It, just, it makes the whole experience more, and you get more out of it, you, mm -hmm. and you learn more. So I think. I think I would say. People who want to to. To take some from this, we need more fun roles mm -hmm. like that for women because that was just glorious. Oh hell like, yeah! Hit Girl's a fantastic example of this. Mm -hmm. That was a fun role. Mm -hmm. It was ridiculously over the top, and she swore so well. Mm -hmm. um, but it was a fun role. It mm -hmm. was just you know you didn't come out of that going oh, or mm. you came out of that going that was amazing. Oh yeah, and and that's the thing that yeah that uh, Matthew Bond seems to be good at doing is dealing with. An interesting and potentially very serious topic, but making it fun as hell to watch mm. you go through. Uh, an interesting one in his back catalogue is actually Harry Brown, which he didn't write or direct, he produced. Uh, and that's very much down the road of, well, I have a very serious topic to discuss. Let's be somber as all fuck. It's, it's a film that I cannot say I enjoyed, mm -hmm. but I acknowledge it's good and will never ever watch it again. This is not one of those films. This is a film that's immediately afterwards you're like, so, DVD. Want it, it's no 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 brainer. <laughs> Tumblr, it, it it's totally fantastic. So yeah, if you want fun action, if you want s some super kick-ass characters, if you want to see Samuel Jackson do a non-shouty performance, but being actually quite reasonable and interesting and funny. Oh, and the villain. Ah, oh, oh. his motivation. I, I I'm serious. His motivation's so good. Yeah, but his he he has a very good point. Mm -hmm. His argument is very sound. Mm -hmm. His methods are horrific. But his argument is sound. Oh god, yeah. All, all kinds of good, yeah. So, if, basically, if you want a film that makes a delicious cake and then eats it with you, mm -hmm. this film is that film. It's fantastic, and yeah, we may have just seen uh, the best spy film of 2015 in February. Mm. Sorry about it. Yeah. And yes, I did just switch to wine halfway through. Subscribe for more videos or donate to our Patreon campaign to help our cat get gold-plated and lowered. Anything we haven't discussed. One thing I love about this film, mm -hmm. the sting is not after the entire set of credits, the sting is after about a small segment. 
Oh, yeah. Like, there were people getting up to leave, mm -hmm. and they didn't get the chance to leave the cinema, because by the time they got them to the door, they'd realised this film was still going on. Mm -hmm. That's a very good thing. Marvel needs to learn this. Do not stick this in at the, at the end of the credits. I work in a cinema. Mm -hmm. We have about five to 15 minutes to clean, and if you wait till the end of the credits, mm -hmm. it gives us less time. And that delays the film for the next set of people. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if the, star if the doors aren't open yet and the staff are looking a bit harassed, yeah, that's why. It's because people left the mess. And then they say it's the end of the film, because it's a bloody Marvel film and there's a sting right at the end of the credits. It's true. Plus, the after the after credit sequence, actually, I like that it goes in that quickly, because it makes it a... Well, we could end it on that note, that that's what happens if you are a gentleman. Or, because that's not the point of this film, we could also have, you know, you do what you should do because it's a good thing to do instead. Also, it's a really nice circular part of the film. But, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Pick up your crap, pick up your stuff. Thank you, Mike. You can play your Skyrims now. 